all that. <laughs> I just don't want people to think it's that it's intense and awful. I mean, there are playful elements to it. I yeah. am having fun. And yeah. particularly where I have fun is when I look at emotions. Yeah. Because yeah. women have been told yeah. all their lives that emotions hold them back. Oh, you're too emotional. I did a radio <laughs> program just last week yeah. where a government minister was sitting there saying, well, you're just taking an emotional response to this. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, we're talking about Syrian asylum seekers being yeah. turned away. I yeah. think an emotional response is exactly the correct that's, that's response really and then put some yeah. rigor around it. Yeah. Um, so women have always been told um, your views aren't valid because they're informed by emotion. Yeah. So I thought, well, let me take that to the next level. Let me have a society of women who uh, have learned to fear and distrust emotions. They, their scientists categorize them um, and then they're rationed because they're regarded as dangerous. Mm. Uh, and uh, and so I call them mo's and and you have to save up your coupons or whatever <laughs> space age coupons well, I had well, that was to get a, a mo. A fantastic invention. Uh, this mo where you have the the, the mo express <laughs> and uh, you take it you take out and you take out the the, the mo and it, it's there for a certain amount of time before it's disappearing yes yeah, so you get it in your system yeah yeah, yeah. So and you get a, you get hybrid mo's if yeah, you need like yeah. constructiveness i think there was a c and a c yeah. which was constructiveness plus courage for a difficult meeting things right, like that okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they don't really see the purpose of nostalgia anymore. Um, it's a sort of a, an emotion or a, a mo that you take when you're with a group, but they're yeah. starting to think maybe we should phase that out as well. And that's <laughs> that's fairly sinister because the ruling body of Sisterland, who are known as the Nine, this preternaturally youthful group of women, yeah. don't want people remembering. Because if they remember what it was like before when men and women cohabited as a family, raised their own children, then yeah. they might not be so uh, docile with the new regime. Mm. I mean, one of the, one of the uh, key elements of the regime is that children are separated from their parents and they're brought up communally. Again, I didn't invent this concept, <laughs> communism no. did. Yeah. Um, but because uh, uh, little girl babies are taken away at a year old, uh, raised communally, as I said, it's all the better to indoctrinate them. Meanwhile, boy babies, because the male species has been relegated to yeah. a, a subspecies, subspecies, yeah. yeah, subspecies, yeah. Um, yeah. They're, they're taken away too. They're not, uh, mothers aren't even allowed to hold them in case they bond. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's all about separating people, keeping them apart, uh, and that's how extremism grows up. And of course, I grew up in the north of Ireland, so yeah. I'm very interested in extremism. Yeah, you have a different uh, viewpoint there, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just... Uh, Catholics and Protestants in the north of Ireland when I was a kid really never interacted. Mm, mm. It's not that we necessarily had anything against each other because let's face it, we're very, very alike. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we didn't meet. We went to different schools, yeah. different churches, um, lived in different areas. And so by the time you meet, um, it's either in the workplace or at university. And by then it's yeah. too late. There's yeah. a sense of otherness about you. Right, okay. So yeah. I, I guess... So I, I realized that in that gap, in that crack, yeah. extremism puts down roots. Yeah, but you can see that's something that you were given, really, that uh, separateness that you're talking about there, that distinction. Yes, yeah. it's a sense of separateness. And I mean, yeah. you could argue that communities themselves embraced that separateness. Mm. Um, equally, since the peace process, what I now see in the north of Ireland is that there's much more communities yeah. coming together. I mean, yes, there are peace walls in Belfast to keep some communities apart yeah. but by and large neighbors just want to get along yeah. with neighbors and it was politicians yeah, really yeah. pouring well, oil on the told from above that this is how it should be yes yeah. indoctrination yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. again mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, I suppose there was a germ there um, and I instead of making my book about mm -hmm. Protestants and Catholics being kept <laughs> apart or Muslims and Christians I made it men and women yeah. but equally yeah. it could have been a political grouping it could have been different tribes, different religions, anything. Yeah. It's just about let's not separate people. Yeah.
Okay, let but me don't ask. worry, there's kissing as well. <laughs> I'm getting very uh, interested in where this kissing is going to take place. <laughs> oh, I'm overselling it. There's not that much kissing. <laughs> well, like, okay, concludingly then, let me ask you about uh, uh, this actual sister lamp. It's, it's, it's a place, it's, it's even mapped out. It resembles America, North and South America. Oh, you've seen through it. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, I, yeah. What, what, I'm, what, what I'm thinking here is that uh, you have a, you've invented a place and it has a lot of attributes, you know, the, the things about it and uh, so on. Uh, is there a possibility that you have, a, you, you have created a landscape that can be used in another context? If you can uh, maybe think of a series of uh, uh, books that is based on the same uh, theme or on Sister Land, for example. Well, I have been asked about a sequel mm. um, and I'm toying with it. Um, I've never done a sequel before. Uh, it was raised as a possibility with another book I wrote. Um, and I said no at that time. Um, I'm toying with this one, the idea of after Sisterland, what mm. happens uh, without giving the plot away. Yeah, um, yeah. Some characters want to leave Sisterland. Mm. They they don't even know there's anywhere outside of Sisterland. They don't even yeah. know there's such a concept. They believe that Sisterland is all there is. Yeah. So you, you so, have uh, created the basis So for, there's for a possibility yeah. that I could bring my characters out to um, other land, for want right. of a better name. Oh. But I haven't decided if I will or not. Um, I don't know what happens to my characters at the end. People ask, you know, is that is that a happy ending or not or what? It's it's an yeah. open ending. Okay. I don't know really. No. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not. You know, at, with, at the risk of sounding like a hapless little typer of <laughs> stories, typist of stories, I wouldn't be 100 percent sure of what would happen to my characters. Okay. Well, we'll just see what the future brings then. Thank you know? you. Martina Devlin, thanks for talking to us, and best of luck with your new novel. Pleasure. Thank thanks, you. Thanks.